the introduction um, and thank you to everyone who is showing interest in, in this topic by listening um, to this presentation. So let's start with a little bit of motivation, why this is important. Um, in the semiconductor industry, the devices are getting smaller and smaller, like we all know. And with that, the allowed defect level on the devices is also getting lower. Uh, and defects can be particles, metal contamination, so on. So, so this is something that um, needs to be addressed. Uh, some of this defects, they originate from the equipment itself, uh, plasma uh, etching, for example, plasma processing tools, they um, can generate um, particles or, or contamination. So we coat them to um, fix that, to avoid it. Um, key requirements for such a coating on these plasma chamber components uh, include low particle generation, low metal contamination, high corrosion, erosion resistance, high conformality. They can be very, very um, complex in shape, have difficult to reach surfaces. Um, and, and this low cost as well as in every industrial application. Main benefits of these advanced coatings, so you can get higher yield, uh, improved process stability, and higher uptime for your own um, tool. So what's the right coating? Um, well, first of all, we need a material that's showing very low erosion. Um, yttrium oxide is a very good example, and, and this is what uh, we've chosen to use here as well. Uh, in the technique that produces high density, low porosity film uh, material and technique showing low metal contamination, this previous um, requirements mentioned already, um, in high conformality to uh, cover the whole part um, with all the complex surfaces. And the coatings need to be applied on various substrate materials, uh, aluminium, stainless steel, ceramics, um, to name a few. So here's a uh, table of established um, methods, anodization, plasma spray, as well as emerging technologies, PVD, ALD. Um, ALD is the only one that ticks all the boxes here that is uh, capable of producing uh, corrosion protective film that, that performs as well, this well. So now we've selected our uh, material and our process or the deposition method. Um, so let's start coding parts. And first thing to notice is, is the parts themselves are very large and, and they, um, they require thick films. We're talking about 500 nanometers or more. Uh, so this leads to large batch sizes. Um, and, and this large being also in dimensions. So we need a large reactor that can handle this. Um, we need high precursor doses, which puts some uh, requirements on the precursor itself, as well as on the tool to be able to deliver these. Uh, high capacity sources, uh, as well as uh, the capability of handling large amounts of residues. So a lot of tool requirements. Um, the processing can be quite slow. Uh, there's a lot of mass in, in the reactor. It takes a while to heat up, cool down. Um, there's also uh, large val large volumes to um, purge, so this can be quite slow. Um, and here, um, some process-specific challenges. So we have heavy yttrium precursors that can be quite sensitive to macroscale flows inside the reactor. Um, if you imagine the cross-flow reactor reaction chamber, and if there is any larger opening anywhere, the precursors tend to follow that route, uh, take the easy way through the reactor, leaving some harder to reach surfaces uncoated. So it can be challenging to produce uniform film throughout the entire batch. Um, it can also be local film thickness variation for the same reason if there are features on the substrates that deflect the flow. And then there's also another process specific um, issue, which is a strong water adsorption on the trim oxide surface, it makes it challenging to purge the water entirely, which um, goes back to the slow processing as well, making it uh, doubly as problematic. Uh, this leads to more than one monolayer being deposited per cycle, which risks uh, or brings in a risk of 
introducing some defects or loss of density in, in the material, which could then be seen as poor um, corrosion resistance in, in a plasma environment. So what are some stress that we were uh, coating in this project is, is this mock-up um, shower head from plasma equipment. Um, so what we um, designed for this um, 460 millimeter outer diameter, 10 millimeter thickness, 4,100 holes in it. So this is some, some, somewhat resembles the um, actual shower head piece that can be found in this semiconductor processing equipment. And to coat this, we used a Bennett P800 reactor. Um, this is a tool that takes the boxes that were in the, in the challenges of, of it being or having to be very large, being able to um, handle a large batch process. Um, we did a thermal deposition process at 250 degrees um, using the precursors methyl CPA treatment and water to uh, grow the film. Use nitrogen as carrier gas. And here's a reaction chamber that we use. So on the picture, you can see me for scale and the chamber itself. It's a batch, uh, large batch cross flow reaction chamber. So there's um, precursors going in from the left, going up from the right. Um, the substrates are slotted on these 15 frames, two by two, two per frame. So we have um, 30 substrates slotted in. Uh, this makes it a very flat surface, very, very even gaps between these to address the problem of precursor delivery everywhere. We have a 22.1 square meter total surface area inside this reaction chamber. It includes the substrates, the frames, and the chamber itself um, without uh, addressing the, uh, without considering the surface roughness. So we ran a few analyses on on um, the silicon pieces that were coated on, on these um, showerhead uh, dummies. And uh, we did single wavelength ellipsometry to um, assess the, or to determine the um, growth features and, and then a few um, other analyses to get the film uh, composition and structure out of Erd LA ICP MS and, and XRD for there, as well as um, ICP reactive ion etching to uh, get an etch rate to get um, the plasma resistance or the um, Edge resistance for this material. So thickness and uniformity, what we got. Um, there's 9% relative standard deviation in, in the reaction chamber throughout. So we can look at this uh, picture on the right. There's a flow going from left to right. There's position A for shower head A and position B um, with um, silicon pieces uh, marked on top of them. So 9% uh, difference throughout the whole uh, whole reaction chamber, but if you look at each position separately, actually quite uniform. Um, we have three and 4% variation on, on them. So we have batch wide variation, but locally pretty uniform. And then the growth per cycle was 2.1 to 2.4 angstroms per cycle, depending a little bit where you're looking at it. And that's um, more than one monolayer at a time for sure. And, and this, um, However, still is very um, controlled and layer by layer, despite being a bit fast. In fact, it can be a blessing in that sense. It makes the processing a little faster. Okay. Uh, tough order to um, work out that the uh, yttrium to oxygen ratio is very close to stoichiometric. Um, so good quality yttrium oxide film here, low carbon hydrogen uh, contents as well. LAICPMS, so um, earlier in the requirements, a low metal contamination in the film. Well, here we have it. Everything's below detection limit, no notable impurities in the film. Um, XRD, uh, we had diffraction peach. Peaks match the um, cubic yttria structure and no other phases were found here. So um, cubic yttria film. And finally, the etch rate of this material. So we have the um, yttria film grown here on, on the right, or the, the rightmost uh, pillar. Um, it's 
an order of magnitude lower than ALD alumina film and two orders of magnitude lower than, than PACVD silica. So we have very high edge resistance despite the uh, possible um, challenges we're facing in the beginning. Um, we have very, very good um, edge resistance here. Um, the parameters can be seen on the right. About to so to conclude this, um, we um, demonstrated atomic layer deposition of yttrium oxide on a very large batch, 22.1 uh, meter squared, containing 30 dummy shower head co uh, components. And we had 9% batch wide thickness non uniformity, 4% substrate non uniformity. Uh, grow uh, cubic yttria film with few impurities. And the edge rate of the positive film was, as I just mentioned, two orders of magnitude lower than, than uh, CVD silica and an order of magnitude lower than, than uh, ALD alumina. Um, to finish this talk, um, I would like to thank a few parties that made this um, possible. University of Uascula, EAG, Laboratories, University of Helsinki, Erlkid. Um, so thank you for all your, for your attention and uh, you can ask me questions. All right, thank you very much, Lassie. Those, those are <laughs> quite large. Uh, what one question that came in is, uh, what is your acceptable growth per cycle? What what do you what is sort of what are you aiming for, and what would would it do anything be too much per se? Um, well, there certainly is too much if if um if we start then having problems with the edge rate, uh, if we start having high edge rate or or problems with um any defects coming off the film. But in sort of, if you're looking at an industrial uh, process, the higher growth rate, the better. So as long as we, we stay, um, we, as long as we produce good film, this is, um, it's all right. Sure, yeah, of course. Um, what about playing around with um, exhaust throttling or full on exposure type mode? Um, have you tried any of those approaches to get better uniformity across? Um, so these can um, cause problems with the um, well speed of, of this process for, for sure. It'll take way longer to do some of these approaches. And at the end of the day, as long as in, in a corrosion resistant film, as long as we reach a minimum thickness everywhere, um, a little bit of non-uniformity is not necessarily a problem. Got it. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, thank you again for a great talk. Uh